guys. Do you remember in last week's video, we talked about how the Christian life is like running a race with a great prize at the end. And we are to press on as a Christian to reach that end in that great prize. So what is that great prize at the end of the race or at the end of our Christian life? Well, our big picture question, which is a new one, answers that. Our question is, what will happen for Christians in the future? Well, one day all Christians will get to see Jesus in all his glory and live with him forever. So that is why we run the race. That's why we live our Christian life with that hope that one day we will get to see Jesus in all his glory and live with him forever. As we have seen, Paul's life and ministry was filled with difficulties, but Paul used his suffering to reach people with the gospel, and he helped people and encouraged them to press on, as we've been talking about, to fully knowing Jesus. This week, we're starting a new unit about standing strong in our faith all the way to the end of our lives. Paul was no stranger to being arrested, as we know, because of his preaching of the gospel. Today we will learn about how Paul used his arrest to reach some pretty unlikely people, some different rulers that he um, was around because of where he was. Some, a couple of governors and even a king and his wife. So we'll, we'll see how he used that bad situation to do God's work. If you have your Bibles, we are in the book of Acts, which is another New Testament book. And it's actually after the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Then we have Acts, and it is it covers three chapters, chapters 24 through 26. And rather than read all of that from my Bible, I will read just a summary to give you an idea. But certainly, I encourage you, if you have your own Bibles that you can read, to read this section um, or to have someone else read it for you. So, Paul had been arrested in Jerusalem, but had been moved to Caesarea for safety. Felix, the governor, met with Paul multiple times over two years to speak with him. Being in prison for years may sound rough, but God was working through Paul even while he was captured. Paul had the opportunity, you see, to share the gospel with the governor for two whole years. And when I was reading this, it, it looks like this Felix guy, governor, was kind of sort of interested, but I don't know, almost like he was afraid to accept what Paul was saying because of his position as governor and he didn't want to upset the Jewish leaders who were against Paul. But there were hints and there were times when he obviously was interested in what Paul was saying. So who knows if God was really working in this man's heart this, this time. When Festus, the next governor, so Felix, we go from Felix to Festus, when he took over, when he took over, um, Paul asked him to be heard by Caesar, who was in charge in Rome. So remember, when Paul was first arrested in Jerusalem, God had told Paul that he wanted Paul to share the gospel in Rome. Now God was giving Paul the opportunity to use his arrest to travel there. Kind of cool how God worked that way. But that also meant Paul had to stay a prisoner even 
longer. But as we have said, Paul was willing to do hard things to share the gospel. And we should be willing as well. He didn't care about his own comfort or safety as much as he cared about obeying God to preach the gospel to everyone. Part of Paul's courage came from his understanding of the future God has promised believers. Remember our big picture question, what will happen for all Christians in the future? Paul knew this. One day, all Christians, and Paul knew that all Christians, will see Jesus in his glory and live with him forever. So that gave him courage because that's a wonderful thing, right? God can use difficult circumstances in our lives to continue his plan. There will be times in your life when you feel scared or sad or you'll go through difficult situations. I would say that this year, this past year with COVID has been a difficult situation. And in those moments, we can take comfort in knowing that God is at work. No matter what's going on in the world, no matter what's going on in your life. And we can take comfort in the fact that God always keeps his promises. And he kept his promise to Paul. And so that helped Paul get through all of these difficult situations. And as we have said, he used those times to continue God's work of spreading the gospel. So let's, let's say a prayer thanking God for his promises and asking him to give us comfort and courage when we face this difficult times. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for stories like this that give us real life examples of you working in people's lives in difficult situations. Father, either we know of people or even ourselves and our families have been through difficult times in this past year with um, COVID and or, or you know, maybe there was a, a friend or family member who died because of COVID. Um, whatever the reasons, Father, we thank you that you love us so much that you don't leave us to be sad um, in those times, but you comfort us. We are comforted just by knowing that at the end of our lives, we get to see Jesus. We get to be with him and we get to see Jesus in all his glory. So we thank you, Father, that we are never alone and that we can trust you and we can believe your word and your promises to us, Father. I ask that you would go with each of us this week and no matter what life brings to us, Father, give us courage to share the good news about Jesus with everyone that we meet. And we make this prayer in your son's holy and precious name, Jesus Christ. Amen. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Why?
Since we're in a new unit, we have a new key passage, and it's once again in the New Testament, and I am working to learn all the books of the Bible. So we are, this is from Philippians chapter one, verse six. Last week, we kind of went over where um, Philippians was. So 
we have the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then Acts and Romans, and then 1st and 2nd Corinthians, and then we have, let me see, I think it's Galatians. Let me get there. <laughs> yes, Galatians, and then Ephesians, and then Philippians, I think. Yep, Ephesians, and then Philippians. So this is, again, Philippians 1, 6. And this is a great one to memorize because it might actually be quite familiar. It was to me when I read it. It says, And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. And that makes me think of that race again that we are going to complete at the end of our lives. And just knowing this is a, another promise. This is another promise of God that when he begins working in us for that, that in that, with that sanctification that we learned about last, last time, that he's going to see it all the way through. He's going to complete that process in us so that at the end of our lives, we become glorified and we get to see Jesus and be with him forever. So again, Philippians 1, 6, and I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. So work on memorizing that verse.